So, welcome to the Tech Talk. Um, so, I guess today um, you can get uh, credit, CME credit, if that's important to you. Um, so, next month on April 6th, Tech Talk, uh, we'll have a presentation on building smart systems to support healthy dietary choices in communities by leveraging cloud, mobile, and big data analytics. So, uh, it's Michelle Hoffer from TV. And next, uh, IDS um, series next week, um, Jean Sun from Jefferson speak on preventing perioperative cardiovascular complications. And we'll have a presentation from Bale uh, Cliff from uh, Engineering Your Care Delivery. So, um, the um, topic today um, that you is going to present survival analysis and also failure time data is, is really an interesting topic. We became expert in this early on uh, at, uh, when we came to uh, Christiana here with, with Secor some years ago. Um, in fact, I think that, uh, um, let's see, you've been here 10 years now. Yeah. yeah. And Almost years, a few years. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Gway came from the University of Iowa, where he got his PhD. Um, very good biostatistics school, I might add. Um, and so he has done uh, uh, really great work uh, here at Christiana, particularly in, in uh, cost and cost effective analysis, and then also um, our um, work here with uh, multiple failure time data where. Patients have more than one failure, more than one death. Obviously, not death, but um, where we look at uh, time to event and you know, more than one uh, possible event, like heart failure or stroke, that sort of thing. So, it's great. It's all yours. Thank you for all your events. Today I'm talking about uh, uh, how can we analyze the multiple failure uh, time data by using summary analysis. As we know, uh, summary analysis has been uh, used in many fields, especially like medical research for um, more than like 30 years. In today's work, I'm going to first uh, um, take a little bit of time to go over basic, uh, basic concepts in this one analysis. And then I will focus on multiple events uh, by using a survival analysis. So I will um, point out the differences between survival models for first events and multiple events. And the majority time of my talk will be um, related to survival models. Or dependent variables on a mobile distribution. 
if you look at the medical literature, you are seeing the two, um, two times, right? So the number of patients and the risk, and the number of patients that survive. So, so this is the, like the survival function, which means we can say is the probability of patients survival longer than T. Correspondingly, we have a third function. It's defined defined as a um, um, uh, uh, function for the probability, which means that F T uh, is called the uh, combinative uh, density function. And at the end, we can say this is the hydrogen function. It's defined as the ratio of the CTF of T um, and uh, the survival function. And uh, beautifully, we have the relationship between the survival function and uh, the hazard function. Yeah, so if we know, which means if we know survival function, we can get the um, a CDF or of of T and vice versa, and then H T here is the cognitive hazard function. So hazard function, survival function, and the CDF or PDF or the survival time can be the convert con convertible, which means if we know one, we can know another. What so, what's CDF again? To go I'm sorry. CDF this is a Cognitive oh, okay. density function and uh, the means uh, probability density function. Uh, this is uh, very popular in medical study. We know the Kaplan Meier product limited pr procedure. So, uh, so this is by using the this is called the non parametric method to estimate the survival function. The advantage is that. This uh, results based upon Kepler Meyer product limiting. It's nothing to do with the distribution of survival time, which means the results are reliable and conservative, and it's nothing to do with the distribution. So we can say the survival function, hazard function, especially like the Kepler Meyer uh, renaming, was based upon the very solid. Uh, Mathematical function. And uh, uh, first, we can use a Cox model to corroborate the co co covariance to, uh, to co get the um, factors related to survival time and the hazard ratio by using this uh, Cox operation hazard model. So, this is the um, foundation we uh, can do survival analysis for uh, the um, medical data. But for a long time, we only use survival analysis to analyze data with the first event. Even though in many research, the, the paper didn't mention that. So, for example, I know we can do death or life, successful or failure, some patients can um, uh, happen or not. But at least in medical research, multiple events are very common. For example, tumors in cancer can be coming again, recurrence. And also, we can see like in cardiovascular unit, um, disease events like MI, HF, or other CVD events can be happening again and again. Of course, for the death only can happen once, but for the long fatal events in cardiovascular disease or heart disease can happen again. So we have to handle like the multiple events. Multivariate time data, or sometimes we call it multivariate survival data, arise from time and two occurrence studies when either of two or more events or sometimes we call the failure occurs for the same, same chapter, same chapter before, from identical events according to related subjects, such as like the family members. In that case, we will take a family as like a, a single unit. And also we all we can see the order of multiple events, multiple events of the same type. And sometimes we can see the risk heterogeneous across time and the subjects with very common time. So we can see subjects 
could have like the, uh, multiple events with different types, and also sometimes some articles with repeated events of some type. For example, repeated like a HF or AMI. Okay. Uh, at the beginning, we look at uh, the situation for uh, the survival of the data. Now, let's look at the multiple outcome events and the survival time. We use the same scenario as in previous slides, but we can see that for the patient one, some or the same type of events happen at two months, at three months, at five months. If we only look at the first event, we will just count this event happening at two months, but we will miss the information at um, uh, three months and four months. And also, for the third patient, which is say some event happened at three months, five months, and then we lost the follow-up this patient. And so, also, like, I suppose we have this patient there. This patient that had two events and maybe not the patient that died. So if we would like to look at the composite of outcomes, we, we will say we will not only look at if we just look at the first event, we may miss this very important event like death. So this is the reason why we need to handle multiple events because first event uh, is not enough us to capture the comprehensive information. Now, how can we handle multiple failure event data? Uh, in today's lecture, um, I will focus on the custom uh, model based upon three different approaches. One is called the end scale model, another is the weighing and um, well field model, and uh, the under the PWP model. And in recent uh, years, there are um, other methods um, developed, were developed to handle the multiple events, like the s the failure time model, and the failure time model. And also, in recent years, when we handle the multiple events, we could use, use like, the competing risk model, which was Reported that talked about by Paul. But today we are just look at how to make the survival analysis to the multiple failure event. Any questions so far? Okay. Cox not for multiple event data. Suppose we have like N subjects. Each experience could be up to K potential events. And then we use ZGI to be indicated the covariance process, process associated with, with the ZGS event for the I subject. So here, with I is the subject and the J is the event. And then we extended the Cox model from one, from the first event to the multiple event by uh, not only look at the subject, but also look at the event. And here, this is called the event of the specific baseline hazard ratio. And then we have the JS event. And then we can get uh, this parameter, uh, even the specific common vector for regression um, for the JS event. So we will handle both uh, situations. One, for each patient. Two, for each event. So we will have two methods. Uh, the first method is pretty straightforward, which means uh, we model this multiple event as uh, the repeated event for each subject, which means like here, like here, for this first patient, we model this patient as like three different patients with the first event happened in the second month, and then this is like the third, the second patient. Just we follow up one month, 
and then the event. And then this seems like a sold to third patient. We followed the two months and then uh, the event happened. So this is like uh, we will we will re uh, recount the number of observations so that each row will represent the event. So, so, so this is the basic method for the. Um, uh, okay. I so this is this is the interesting um, and uh, sometimes. We can use the AT model if we believe that the different uh, events for the same patient are not so related. And then, then the second model is uh, given by Wei Ni and uh, uh, Whitfield proposed a much low risk assessment model, which allow time independent covariance and also. We can set up the arbitrary patterns of censorship. Censorship means uh, some patients must follow up, or some patients uh, uh, we didn't uh, observe the event until the end of the study. But we do not have, have a specific structure uh, for the independence of time on the subject. The third method is the partner and the common use, it's called the PWP model. Which means we will we will look at the different um, time till this uh, uh, event happen, and then we based upon the prior number of events during the follow up time period. And also, this is called the conditional uh, survival analysis, which means we will look at these um, events that happened for the for, for a simple patient as related. Which means we assume that, uh, suppose uh, some multiple events happen for one patient, we can set up some relationship between or among the events. So this is the why this conditional model is popular and uh, widely used in, in, in multiple event survival analysis. Now let's move on to the, our. Um, uh, mechanism of we use multiple events and then we want to look at how can we use multiple events analysis to do analysis. This um, project uh, was conducted um, many years ago in the company the NWF Competition Study. This study this study contains information from an administrative and clinical system um, which um, related to patient care activity from an acute and um, office settings. This study employed a prospective collective and an outcome the retrospective longitudinal database extracted from an EMR system. All patients are evaluated for cardiovascular yeah. events and death. The outcomes in this study uh, related to like um, uh, cardiovascular disease, stroke, uh, AMI, um, heart failure, coronary heart disease, cardiovascular uh, dysrhythm, hypertension, and um, uh, TVD. We define an event as a, any hospital or emergency room discharge with a principal diagnosis associated with one of the CVD events described above. Since we have a uh, different type of um, events, so uh, based on the data set, we noticed that, that some patients had uh, uh, some patients had uh, several events during the follow-up time. Uh, in this data set, we have um, we um, um, observed eight eight hundred ninety-eight first CVD events, and uh, then. We can look at uh, from the intake state the first uh, event was uh, about 3.6 years. And um, okay, this is the technical part because if we would like to use survival analysis, especially what can, can you use the Cox regression model with a very test uh, the proper patient 
because this TVA unit is pointed to the CS9, which means this uh, uh, something is satisfied. Um, this is uh, not common in medical research because some medical uh, articles didn't show uh, the T value for the uh, model test, which means we don't know if the assumption is satisfied or not. If we just use the cost model for first uh, CVD event, we will see this is uh, the results. And uh, we in, in can look at the risk of first CVD events by pushing the blood pressure caliber, which is this is a normal, this is mild hypertension, this is moderate hypertension, that this is a severe hypertension. And then we can see the head ratio. And um, so we can see that the 10 year rate is about from 2.2% increase to the mild hypertension 87%, moderate hypertension 14.3%, and for the severe it is 32.1%. If we look at the, the first CVD event. Is that good enough if we only look at the first CVD event and uh, say this is the terminative incidence of first CVD events? And the here is to indicate the, the severe um, blood pressure, and the, this is the light five percent confidence in the interval. And this is moderate, this is mild, and this is normal. So, so we can see this is the combinative instance. By the way, to get the combinative instance curve, we just need that you use one minus survival from the software. But what's easy in our study if we only look at the first event? We can see that. How many first events? Ignore the multiplicity, which means we will miss a lot of uh, um, multiple events. This method will be not adequate because it will be a lot of possible information. For example, in our um, project, there were 482 CVD events excluded in the analysis. So we can see about one third of events. Well, uh, it gets loaded from the analysis, which means a lot of information lost. And also, it is difficult to deal with long term questions. A follow up period is short only cover from the index data to the first event, which means, as we just uh, uh, say that, the first event could uh, happen like the second month or third month. But we found the patients could be like 10 months or even 30 months, which means we shrank the follow-up time. So, so uh, this is the um, two main reasons why we should not only focus on the first event. First is a lot of uh, events, and the second, we shrank the follow-up time. And then, we can see that the occurrence of first and multiple CVD events by patient. So, so we can see that. So, for the normal high blood pressure, for the normal blood pressure, this is the first event, the second event, the third event, the first event, and the fifth or uh, larger event. And then we can see that with the blood pressure getting higher and higher. The second, third, fourth, and the fifth event, the percentage will be like an uh, increase, which means for the patients with severe or um, um, moderate uh, blood pressure, we will miss we will miss another many second, third, fourth, or fifth event. So this data shows that. For our study, if we only look at the first event, we will miss another information. And the conclusions based upon the first event could be misleading. 
So to finalize the live data, uh, using like a track track in sets. Okay, also we can use like a guest class or set. The counting process value input is needed, which means we have to have a mechanism to count the multiple events. So as such, with k event that contributes k plus one observation to the input data set. For example, if we look at a patient that has two events, we will look at the from the beginning to the first event, from the first event to the second event, and also from the second event to the end of the study or to the, uh, to the time loss follow up or or like uh, the, um, the study and and then the just observation of the subjects identifies the time interval from the J minus one events or time zero to the J event, which means for the first event, the time interval will be from the beginning to the first event. For the second event, the time interval will be after first event to the second event. And so on. And for the last one, we were to the time will be from the, the previous event to the, the last event, like, uh, like that. Or from the previous event to the time we lost the follow up, or from the last event to the time of the end of this one. So we have to be very careful to look at the time interval. And the K plus one observation represents the time interval from the cast event to the time of censorship. Censorship to the glass follow up to the end of the slide. So this is a very technical step to handle the multiple events. See, let's look at it like um, uh, this one. So we can see a first event just here, and then if we look at these um, multiple events, and then suppose we have here one, two, three, three events, and then we follow up from the beginning to the end of sun, and then we will see. If we only look at the first event, we will just cut here, and then the information after the first event will be um, get rid of. And then for the multiple events, we then will see from the study to the first event, from the first event to the second event, from the second event to the third event, and then from the third event to the censorship. So, in order to handle uh, this multiple event, so we need to set up a new variables in the data set. So the input data set should contain either called the G-start variable to, to represent the J minus one's recurrence time or the value zero if J equals one, which means J equals one means from the start. And then, we have to have another variable called the G star to represent the G recurrence time or the follow up time if J equals K plus one. And then, this is a very important, which will figure out the gap time or the time interval, which means from a G star to G star for the next event. And then, the input data set. Should it be like uh, uh, use a variable to indicate that this map is a recurrence time or the sensor or the sensor time? Because this is a very important in in survival analysis. We have to have a variable to indicate this event happened by just a sensor. So we have a start equals the equals one, which means the event happened or recurrence, and the the, the that has equals zero for the sensor, and then we we use a stress variable to indicate the chest event or sensor. So 
he'll implement them. He'll implement the multiple event survival technique. And the data set is organized as follows. For each patient, there must be one observation per event, or per record, or time interval. So which means this is a time consuming and uh, very technical to reorganize the data set. If a patient has no event, there will be one observation for that patient which the sensor status of the event. That will be the, exactly the same as the first event for uh, in the cell analysis. If a patient has one or several events with the last event or he or his death, then the number of observations for the patient is the number of his or her events. And uh, if the patient does not die, so we, we should have another one additional observation to indicate after the last event what happened, which means the sensor, the sensor could be follow up, not follow up for uh, end of study. So here we can say that for this patient um, three, we can do like this. This is the patient number three. This is the base to end it. And then we can say they have like a CVD. We have a CVD, maybe it's AMI or HA. But the last one is that. So we can say this um, happened at the same event. And then we have to add uh, four, uh, four new variables. We should have a time start, time stop, and then we can use the interval as a gap time, and then we use this as a strata to indicate the series, the order of events. So, so here we have the time start from the, the beginning, and then stop at this 2.96 years, and then this is gap time, and then we see this is the first event. And then this is the second event. And then this is the third event. And the corresponding to each event, we have start time, we have stop time, and then we have get time at the interval. So we have to be very careful to imagine the data set so that we can do multiple survival analysis correctly. But their, their last event wouldn't necessarily have to be death. No. No. So, so for example, uh, not to death. I'm not. Uh, okay. All right. Not to, not to death. If we have uh, uh, the um, is three events, but uh, last one is not death, and then after this one, we observe one more month. So we will have the another observation, which means we were going to see since this strata has like a four, but this strata uh, has to indicate the leadership will be zero, which means sensor. So I, I, know, I don't understand here in, in the green. So the first row is zero, it, it stop at zero, stop at 1.24, the gap time is 1.24. Why does it stop? Stop back at zero. Oh, it's a different. Is it the same? Oh, okay. okay. Then it is like this. For the patient at one and the patient at two. That's a different patient. Yeah, because they look for those two patients. They didn't have yeah. like yeah. Um, multiple okay. events. Okay. So I we just uh, keep, keep the same, but yeah. but we calculate the key stop, key stop, gap time. Uh, I didn't realize it was uh, there were different yeah. patients. So the patients who have several observations is number three. Yeah. And then the, the gap, the, the stop time is the first time at the third event. Yes. Yeah. So, which means we will treat the patient that had multiple events. Um, here, like this uh, separate uh, observation part, we will use this as a we will use this as a to indicate these uh, three observations are related. So, which means if a patient has one or more events and was alive until the end of the follow up, 
This Samsung solution when the patient is one more number of his or her event. This is what I said. So this is what you just uh, mentioned. If the last event is was not death, so which means has one or more events but was alive until the end of the follow-up, then the number of solutions for the patient is one more number of face or um, um, heart events. Okay, I I will add one more slide to indicate this situation. The next time divide. Okay, so first observation will cover the time from the entry into the study until the time of the first event. The second observation will cover the time from the first event to the second event, and so on. The last uh, observation spans from the last event to the end of the follow-up with the sensor status of the event. So this is the uh, very careful and um, technical strategies to do multiple And you do this for any, uh, all the methods that you uh, listed? That's the same principle, that's the same method? Um, we can do like, um, okay, for the um, uh, three methods, we should have a like this. Yeah. The difference is that for the uh, AG method, they will, they will not uh, assume there is some relationship. But the time should be from the beginning to the first event. But the, for, for the second event, the time window, time interval should be from the first event to the second event and so on. And then we have to handle this situation if the patient is still alive at the end of the follow-up. Oh, here I have this situation. Yeah, here I have this situation. For example, for this patient at number five, see three events here. So we count three events. But in the last one, because last event, we can see that we still follow about 3.145 units time. And then this we count as sensor. Yeah. So we should be, so in this way, we will, we will exactly and um, carefully master or comprehensively um, catch this time and the event for each patient. So that we comprehensively use all of the information, all of the event uh, information so that our results based upon this kind of method should be more reliable. So this is the way like uh, we can do like an AG model, and then, then we get this results. And then if we do like a, a, P, a PWP model, we can <coughs> get uh, this results. And then this is uh, quite different uh, from um, the several analysis. If we the like uh, familiar with uh, the like uh, we can do like this time and this level. And here we will have like start or stop. So we can say this gap time means different interval for different events. This is very important for the multiple events. And then this is the results we do we obtain what the cumulative incidence of conditional multiple series events. So this, so this results um, captured all of the comprehensive information, including the multiple events, based upon our proposed method. And, then, and then we can see uh, this is the CBD event of risk survival by each of the blood pressure category. So we can if we look at uh, here, this is a terminator and uh, this is the, the, the event of risk. and uh, then the relationship is just uh, one minus which is uh, uh, complementary. Next question. So what's the difference between A B C of the panels here? 
because uh, the, the the blood pressure categories are the the the, the, uh, the curves, right? Yes. One's okay. the AG model and one is the Okay, okay, so, so we can say this is we just look at the first event. Oh, okay. okay. This is we look at the unconditional multiple events. This difference is that this we have to look at the first event. And then, okay. and then here we know it is a multiple event, but we assume the multiple events with the same patients. And uh, we made it. So, I don't, I don't understand. I understand multiple events, and I understand the measurements you're making. Um, but CVD events free sur survival. I mean, I don't understand if if, if everyone who's going to have an event has a first event. I don't understand where the curves in B and C look, in A and B look different. Okay, because this is only counted for the first event. I understand, I understand that. Uh, that one, but but everyone has has a first event. And that's what, what makes the survival curve go down when they have an event. Mm -hmm. They go down again when they have another, it goes down again when they have a second event? Uh, this the same event will be... Uh, How's that counted? How is it counted on the y-axis here? Okay, this is the y-axis is the probability of the event of rate. Uh-huh. Yeah. So which means here we see that what is the... What is the uh, severe, uh, severe blood pressure? Which is say, if we uh, if we count the multiple events, the survival rate will be lower. This makes sense. This uh, makes sense. Yeah, we are including the first events, right? Yes. All yes. Events. Yeah. And multiple so events. So, so you're counting multiple events on the y-axis. Multiple events are being counted. Yes. Yeah. All right. So let me ask you, but you're counting them as independent. As independent yeah. events. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so you have. So, right. so, yeah. so one patient has had four events. You just uh, treat this patient as the four Each different patients. Each patient is another event. Oh, yes. yeah. that's bizarre. Yeah. All right. that's so, like this. Yeah. Well, it's just a matter of what you're doing. Yeah. All right. So. Uh, and here, here, this is just like that. One patient has had four events, mm -hmm. but we say that this is one unit. And these four events are related. So that's a C event? Yes, this is, this is a C, yeah. So do you test your assumption of conditionality? Because it seems like, to me, mm -hmm. most of the time, mm -hmm. your events are going to be correlated, right? Definitely, yeah. The yeah, 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 second yeah. event's going to depend upon the first yeah. event. So model B would not be <coughs> the model Everyone who has the second yeah, yeah, yeah. the first event. Oh, so you are right. Model B is not the right. most notable. Right. Yeah. 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 So no, that's okay. the, the, the argument against using Anderson Gill because it assumes that there's no relationship. relationship. Yeah. Obviously, a person who has an event is more likely to have another event. So right. Yeah. So we can see that in the... Everybody who has a second event is 100% likely to have another event. Is there a, a, there a test for that assumption that you can say... I don't know. So... Do you test for that? Yes, the assumption for uh, the conditionality of events. Yes, yeah. So that's what that's what you're doing with C. So what's the what's the model of C? C is a conditional multiple events, which means we will count the same patient at the multiple events highly related. All right, so they're, they're correlated. Yeah. So we can say this plot C is like a like sort of a compromise between model A and model B. Because because what's about to be uh, model A is definitely uh, underestimated, and the model B is definitely overestimated, and the model C is between A and B. But of course, it, it involves a number of assumptions. Yes. Yes. All right. So let me ask you, uh, and one of the one of the problems with this to, to me has always been the the, 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 the problem of, of competing risk. So everyone that dies, as soon as they die, they don't have another opportunity for a vet. Um, but the people with severe hypertension, they're going to have more deaths. So you're, so you're, you're, you have a competing risk against multiple events, especially with severe hypertension, because they, they, they die. They can't have any more events. So the competing risk and the multiple events, uh, should be the different uh, technique that you have. So, 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 so the competing risk model of sort of like um, uh, 
take care of running on like the multiple events. Mm -hmm. yeah, but yeah. Uh, mm, confusion in this map should be like uh, more um, um, more suitable for the real situation. So this is the reason why in recent uh, years the multiple events uh, has been used, but the computer in this map are like more so more attractive. So of course there you have to make assumptions too because you have you're you're assuming event rates that you never observe, right? Event rates are some as a big assumption. Yeah. So you can have to. It's very hard. Yeah. So we need that to be be addressed by some security analysis. Yeah. Because we can assume the different event rate and then. For the given event uh, rate, we, we consider the different uh, uh, catalogs, and uh, then we look at the range of catalogs. Yeah. So this is going to be a type of sensitivity. Yeah, I mean, I don't see how you can do a competing risk model if you have the same events. You know, if, if you have a competing risk, you, you would have a survival curve for each of the events. Yeah, but here for hypertension or, or you know a, a, a risk factor like that, I mean, you, most of the time you would have, I mean, except for death, as Bill was saying, but most of the time that would be the same cardiovascular event, right? I well, mean, that no, would be MI stroke. If you have MI stroke in death, death removes your ability to look at other events. How are you? How are you? How are you? But how how do you do if someone has multiple MIs and then die? I mean. How do you count for the multiple MIs? Well, that's not, that, there you don't really have competition, right? It's not, it's not like, because comp competing risk, the idea is you remove the ability to look at something. I think this is as one of the shortcomings of competing risk, because if the event type are the same, how do you, how do you count that? So, 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 I think this is one of the reasons why. Competing risk markers and uh, multiple event markers are uh, both uh, used. I'll have to go back and look at that because I think in the data set where I did competing risk, there were people that had the same event more than once. Forgetting that But I think that's manageable. I mean, the, the problem with competing risk, I mean, let's say you want to look at MI rates uh, across hypertension categories. Um, but, but the people with severe hypertension, they're, they're dying off. Well, the, the, the MI rate isn't meaningful, right? Because you've, you've removed your ability to look at an MI because of this competing risk of death. And, and the answer to that is that if you ignore it, I mean, so, you know, I asked that to, question to, uh, to, to Stuart Pocock uh, years ago. Uh, so here's, you know, one of the, the great biostatisticians on the planet. Uh, and he said, I said, how do you handle that? And he said, I ignore it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if, if your mortality rates are low enough, I guess you can. But in some areas, you know, you really, you really can. So, um, I mean, any is that um, you know, which show that the utility event for the normal blood pressure is comparatively low. So we can say the results are comparatively safe. And uh, with like uh, the mild, moderate, especially for the severe blood pressure. We can see the results change but, uh, obviously uh, uh, So this is the reason why if we have a different uh, like uh, percentage of events for uh, different categories, we should be run, uh, we should do uh, multiple event analysis. But uh, okay. if the patient started out with normal blood pressure and developed hypertension, did they Hypertension, did they change lines? Okay, this is a very good question, yeah. So this is called, um, we will use another variable for the time, time variable, variable you indicate. Yeah. And here, and, and, um, and um, um, here we, let me see, we didn't consider this time variable. Uh, because this is changed a lot, changed because of um, um, uh, uh, the observable window 
uh, yeah. Artificial UI. So in this analysis, we use the baseline as the, the blood pressure category. Maybe we should have another tech talk about time different variables. That's yeah. great. Yeah. That's, 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 that's good. Exposure. That's a great topic. Yeah. Yeah. So, wait, can I ask another question? So, is this statement accurate or not? Not only does severe hypertension increase the risk for a first event, but it also increases your risk or multiple events. Can you say that for a minute? Because that curve goes down more than the other. I mean, so for the first event, we can say the event of free, the, the, the probability of event of free for the severe blood pressure is uh, the lowest. Yeah. And then, if we consider that it's a multiple event, we, we can see it's uh, lower than the first event. Yeah. But, but what you're really doing here is you're, you're, um, you're really looking at the number in the sense of the of events. It's just that in, in the one you're kind of ignoring the correlation between, uh, you know, within, within the patient. I'm not sure that that really yeah. answers. But I think the answer is the number of events. You are is, uh, is the difference uh, between the green okay. line and the red line larger in C than it is in A? Is, it, is the answer to your question? Yeah. It looks like that. Actually. It looks like it is, but you you know you can get the no actual numbers. Yeah. Actually, from the previous table, we can see that. And you can see right. that. the different the type of blood pressure. The number of uh, uh, multiple events increased, especially compared to normal blood pressure. Okay, so this is the risk of first that multiple events by the patient of blood. No, I, I want to. I'm sorry. Could you back up? I was going to look at the hazard ratio. Yeah. So we can see this. Uh, so it's funny, the unconditional is even, is, the conditional is higher than the unconditional, kind of. Uh, uh, at least at high in severe blood pressure. This is not what we saw on the... Uh, no, this is compared to normal. Right. Yeah. But when you look at severe, if you look at, so the, the hazard ratio is 6.27 compared to unconditional, where it's 5.87. Yeah, it looks different. It's, so, it's peculiar. And it doesn't match the curve. Right. So that's that's correct. all. Okay. Okay. I want to I want to see the results. You know this is confusing. If it even confuses Zugui, I'll tell you what. <laughs> that's the whole thing about you know. I think that's why clinicians don't like multiple events because this is it's so it's so confusing. You can get lost in it. Well, and just and just to set up the data mm -hmm. set isn't easy. Straightforward. You mean you don't have a, 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 a program that is just. Yeah, I, I, I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you eventually get the program right. So, so I'll tell you a story about that. Or, do you have more? You have some more slides? Yeah, I have some slides. So. Uh, um, I was at a, a, a review committee meeting for, for um, the, the um, Improvement trial, which is a trial comparing the Zetamide plus Simvastatin to Simvastatin alone. And it was conducted uh, by um, uh, uh, um, Harvard, Juju Brownwald was the overall chair, and Chris Cannon was very, you know, very eminent people. Was the uh, the, uh, um, the PI and uh, the data analysis was done at Duke, um, and then they had this woman, um, Sabina, Sabina Sabina Murphy. You know Sabina? Uh, I know of her. Yeah, I think she's only she's a master's degree biostatistician. But she's very very good. Um, I mean, she's a little like Bailey was here. I mean, just just wonderful master's level biostatistician. Very 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 smart. So she 
presented the multiple events from this trial. And it was very, it was very confusing. Um, but there were a lot more events. So no less than Dr. Brownwald says, well, with all these events, that means that the number needed to treat is smaller. <laughs> and I'm going, oh, my God. and um, and and Sabina, Sabina is you know what she's going to say, you know. So you know you don't know, know who Doctor, you know who Doctor Bradwell. You know, you know who Dr. So I mean, this is the most famous physician on the planet, right? So you know I'm going to say Doctor Bradwell if you're wrong in public. Well, I would because I'm obnoxious like that. So <laughs> so Sabina, so, so, so I go over to her. I afterwards I said, now Sabina. You gotta tell them that this is not correct. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that the thing that you listen to here is that not many physicians or medical researchers are very interested in the events. Well, because they don't understand it. <laughs> and, and it's hard to understand. It is very, very com complex. Um, but I'll, I'll tell you the, that um, clinical trialists and the FDA are very interested in multiple events. Because, because if you don't look at multiple events, you lose information. But the problem with multiple events, along the lines of you see, any way you analyze it, it's not straightforward. Like, like just having Kaplan-Meier curves and, and looking at the p-values the, the p to see if they're, they're different. Any way you approach it means modeling assumptions uh, yes. that are uncertain. You know, and you, when you start talking to clinicians, well, we have to make the following assumptions. They don't understand any assumptions. <laughs> they don't want to hear about it. So, so wait, how do you how do you select the methods that you want to use? What 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 are what are the reasons for selecting one method versus the other one? That's oh, that's a conditional. Okay. Anderson Gill is just not correct. Oh, okay. This is wrong. But at least you can see her multiple events. Yeah. Not only the first event. Yeah. But you'll still see Anderson Gill. You'll see it sometimes. Yeah, I've read it. I've read it. Yeah. I've read it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. papers on the same. Along the lines. You, you, That's just what you showed in your you, example. You, you, you carefully look at the statistical methods. Like uh, two months ago, we looked at the uh, 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 people published in New England Journal of Medicine. They used the very basic run method to test that. The continuous was different. Do you remember that? Yeah. What was it? Continuous and she tested. She tested like normal, normal statistics. Well, you know, it's a. So I can't believe that people published in New England Journal of Medicine because in the New England Journal of Medicine, that's the statistical review, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, you've seen what the statistical reviews are like from the New England Journal. They're very intense. I mean, you see wrong statistical methods, you know, just all the time. And yeah, you know, I always tell I always tell the trainees read the methods, but the methods, but the methods are wrong. Not only do you have to read the methods, you have to be able to spot when they're wrong. And you know, how are we going to tell clinicians, you know, uh, Anderson Gill is wrong, you got to use PCP. I mean, you know, like, what are you talking about? I tend to have more errors and more retractions than the regular journals. And one of the reasons is that they tend to want to publish things that are very topical, and they want to publish things very rapidly. Um, and so, you know, this whole business now of simultaneous publication and presentation, so, you know, we're just submitting yet another paper in the New England Journal, besides the one, you know, we're putting another, knit another Courage paper in the New England Journal. So he writes John Jarko, and he write, write, writes back, oh, they're just killing me, they're killing me because I got I to gotta prepare for the ACC. And I'm thinking, 
there's something wrong here. The New England Journal is, you know, where things like that, those papers are out there forever, and they're concerned about the topicality of some crummy presentation of the American College of Cardiology. I just, yeah, I get that all the time from Jack, because I can, you know, get in right, we're this yeah, because yeah. it's being presented, right. you know, in next week. <laughs> The New England Journal has they've, they've had to retract. They've had some famous retractions. Which is like right. something that's not someone made a mistake, but right. something was done wrong. Right. 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 Like, yeah. like a, uh, wrong. Not, not like I used the wrong like statistics. Like a lie. Like I mean, yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> you know, I mean, I've had right, I've had uh, not myself, but with co-authors, uh, we've had we've had. Um, addendums when there's been a minor statistical error. I mean, that's normal. You know, if you find you've made some minor error, you just send in a letter about it. That's normal. So I, I think we should have a tech talk at some point about dependent variable, time dependent variable. Time dependent variable. That'd be good. Oh, you're on the schedule. Uh, that's September, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. I can probably do that in by September. Haggett, Ben, Paul Nider, Paul Hunt. We're going to line up. Right. Right, thank you.